Good morning. It's another week. People of God, we thank God for his grace. We thank God for his privilege for giving us another wonderful day such as this. I have come and I think I have some anxiety message today. But before we go into the message, can we please bow down our heads and pray. Father Lord, thank you for your love. Thank you for the favor. Thank you for your mercy that you bestowed upon our life. We just thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done, the things that we can see and the ones that we cannot see. Lord God, as we have come again to fellowship and to listen to this message, we just pray, Lord God, that you touch every soul and every mind. Lord God, transform us to that person that you want us to be. Continue to feel us and continue to lead us. And we shall continue to follow you. For we pray in your precious name. Amen. This morning, I'm sorry, people of God. Uh, I know many of you are used to me singing before I get into the message. Uh, today is going to be one of those days that I would just have to go in straight into the message. Like I said, I believe I have an exciting message. And I'm ready to just deliver it. If you don't mind, open with me to the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. I'm going to read from verse 1 to 7. And the word of the law reads, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is. Sit at the right hand, of God, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died and your life is eaten with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. I've tied to the message today as Set your mind on things above. Send, set your mind on things above. People of God, you and I already know right now, if we doubt before that everything in this world can be greater in our face when we see them, but during this period of these uh, lockdown or epidemics or pandemic, different names that he has been called, COVID-19, we all can realize that none of the things in this world can be that greater than the power of God. It is ideal for us as believers to strive every day, regardless of the situation we find ourselves, to set our mind on the things of God, which is the only thing that is permanent. Always remember, don't forget, that we live in a world that is full of temporal things. Temporal things. You talk about money, you're talking about prestige, you're talking about beauty, you're talking about structure, you're talking about health, all these can be temporary, but one thing that is permanent is that Christ that lives in us and the things of God that is above. Paul made us to, to understand that on the thing, only thing that is permanent is that which is of God. That is why he speaks in his word. And said in verse 1, 
Say, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Nobody is there yet, but we can just imagine. We can imagine what, what it's going to look like, knowing all the works of wonders and miracles that Christ did, even when he came. Thousands of years before now, God has sent his only begotten son to give us hope and salvation, which is the only thing that keeps a lot of people going right now, even in the midst of this whole situation. The hope that Christ brought back then, we still enjoy it. How much more when we reign with him? No matter how long we enjoy the worldly goods or possessions. Always remember, it is for a temporary moment. They will come and they will disappear. But the only thing that remains permanent and the only thing that makes you and I different from anybody else is the Christ that lives in us and makes us all is goodness to be permanent in our life. People of God, before I give you these three points, I just want you to hear this. That the truth of the matter is this. Without the grace of God and his divine discipline of our minds, we cannot overlook the pleasure and the things of this world. It is true. Without the grace of God and his divine discipline of our minds, we cannot, we cannot just overlook the pleasure that this world gives. We cannot overlook the things that this world gives but only by the grace of God and his divine discipline. Then how, how then can we overcome the tricks of the things of this earth? How? Because the things of this earth is going gonna, is gonna to entice us every day. It's going to be attractive to our minds every day. Everybody want to live good. Everybody want good things. There's nothing wrong in that. But here is the truth. We can also enjoy it moderately. We can. But how can we overcome the tricks of the things on this earth? Number one, just like the scripture says, it says, put to death every earthly nature. Put to death every earthly nature. If you go with me into the same place that we read, Colossians 3, verse 5 to 7 says, Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. Many of us know what it looks like, what it feels like to live in sin, to live in, a, in our uncleanness. Many of us lived that life before, but we enjoyed the grace of God that brought us to the light. But if you are still out there, still going after those things, God is saying to us, put to death every earthly nature. Number two thing, put off. So check this out. The very first one is to put to death. But the second one says, put off every earthly appearances. See, 
appearances has to do with uh, her behavior sometimes. Yeah, the nature and appearances kind of so close, but also still different. Put off every earthly, uh, earthly appearances. Every earthly appearances. This we can find in the book that we read. Verse 8 to 9 says, But now you yourself have to put off all this anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds. Put it off. Put it off. These are the tricks that this word used to get us. These are the tricks of the things of this earth. And the last one is to put on the new man. Put on the new man, the new nature, the new life, the new person. Put on, put on Christ. We can read from verse 10 to 17. And this is where I'm going to be bringing this message to a close. But let's read. Verse 10 to 17 says, And I've put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, sestirian, slave, nor free, but Christ is whole and in whole. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercy, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your heart to which also you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord, and whatever you do in the word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. People of God, I hope the message that I've brought this day finds you at the point of your needs and meet with those spiritual needs that you need this day, this week and for the rest of this month and this year. Set your mind on the things above. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Lord, I release your word into the atmosphere and into the home and souls of those that are listening to this message right now. I just pray, Lord God, that you begin a new thing in our lives. Begin to mold us and make us that person that you truly want us to be. Perfect all that needs perfection in our life and reveal more of you to each and every one of us. Bless us and bless this week. For we pray in your precious name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week and the rest of the month. May the Lord bless you throughout the days.
years of your life. Amen.